in New Brunswick to Canada. He loved outdoor adventures in the winter time. And then in the spring, all the boys would run down to the wharf, which was right beside the Canada Cases River in Hampton. And as soon as the ice was out of the river, what do you suppose the boys wanted to do? Yes? Fishing. Fishing, exactly. And three times a week, this river boat came up the river from St. John. And soon as that river boat rounded the bend of the Kennebec Cases River into Hampton, the captain would blow the whistle, and the boys would start running down to that wharf because they wanted to grab one of the ropes that the crew members threw ashore. And if you grab one of those ropes, that meant you were able to help tie up the riverboat. And you go home at supper that night and say, guess what I did today? I helped tie up the riverboat. How many people here have ever made a mistake? And I'm going to need to put my hand up as well. Usually we make mistakes and nobody's badly hurt and we learn from our mistakes and we move on. But every once in a while we make a mistake where there is a great cost. And that happened to John. Now three chapters in the book have to deal with this. And so I don't want to tell you that because I would spoil your reading it. But I will tell you this much. John was six years old and he and two of his friends were playing with matches. John's left arm got so badly burned that a number of months later, they had to amputate it. So I'd like you to take your left arm and put it behind your back. And I want you just to imagine that you're John Humphrey. Just recently, your arm was amputated, and you're going to be starting school. Your friends are all in grade two, because they went last year when the doctors were trying to heal your arm. And you are on your way to school with your older sister, Ruth, and your older brother, Duff. How do you think you might be feeling right now? Yes? Scared. Scared. Why might you be scared? What are you afraid of? Because you kind of like get a target for bullying. A target for bullying. Because with just one arm, that made John different. different. And you're right. If you're different, you're a target for bullying. What I'm going to read to you now from the book is a part of chapter 11. And this, I have to tell you that John's first day went well, but one day after Thanksgiving, two grade eight boys named Murray and Charles waited for John outside at recess time. These two had a reputation for being bullies. They led John away from the playing field to the side of the school. John was scared because Murray and Charles were much older and bigger than he was, and they seemed mean. Murray said, do you think Johnny can fight with just one arm? Ha, replied Charles in a mocking voice. Johnny's not a fighter. A crowd of boys came to watch, circling around John and his tormentors. Charles loudly teased. Diddle, diddle, lovely, one arm, John. He went to bed with two arms on. Murray encouraged the crowd to enter into the fun. The other boys joined in, chanting. Diddle, diddle, lovely, one arm. Murray enjoyed exciting the crowd, but when he woke up, his arm was chopped. But when he woke up, his arm was chopped. John lowered his head so the boys couldn't see the tears running down his face. He didn't know what to do. If he ran, they might chase him or tease him worse the next time. Johnny, you can't fight Alan, can you? Murray taunted. John thought about what he should say. He tearfully replied, I don't. Fight. The crowd yelled. Ralph and Douglas rushed over to see what was going on. They were John's two best friends. They watched from outside the circle of boys. They wanted to help John, but the other boys seemed so much bigger. As bad as they felt for him, John's good friends were too scared to speak up. Charles and Murray started dancing around John, chanting, John's the one I do come for. The older pupils had learned in school that the Dukovors were a religious group of people who had immigrated to Canada from Russia and believed in a life of peace and goodwill. If the boys called you a Dukovor, it was meant as an insult. You were neither strong enough nor brave enough to stick up for yourself and fight back. John was deeply hurt as the crowd chanted, John's a one Dukovor. At the back of the school, John's older brother was playing ball with some of his friends. He heard the taunting and decided to see what was going on. 
Duck found John, crouched on his knees, head down, surrounded by a group of boys. Charles was poking at John's empty sleeve with a stick. Doc was mad. Stop it, he yelled. Leave my brother alone. Right behind Doug was a teacher who ordered the boys to stop immediately and sent Charles and Murray to the principal's office. As soon as the Humphrey children arrived home after school, John ran straight upstairs to his room. I'm never going to school again, he yelled, <coughs> slamming the door to his bedroom. When someone is being bullied, are you a bystander, one of the crowd, or an upstander? Now, I read about the Upstander Group, which was formed by Westminster High School in London, Ontario, and they say to be an upstander means that you try to stop that bullying, either by yourself or getting help. And the second part of being an upstander is that after the bullying incident is all over, you go and you find that person who is being bullied, and you invite them to be part of your play, whether it's out in the schoolyard or perhaps a hockey game with you so that they feel included. Because when you're bullied, you feel awful, right? And you feel like you're worthless. But as an upstander, you can help that person to start feeling feel better about themselves. John, during his growing up years, showed lots of potential for leadership. Some of the things John learned to do with one arm was tie a tie, swim, paddle a canoe, Pretty amazing activities for a boy with one arm. And all I can say to this is. Wow!